So in this video, I'm going to derive the propagation ray transfer matrix. And you might ask why we would, why we would want such a thing. Uh, why something as simple as propagating through space requires a matrix. Uh, well, the answer is that if we want to describe an optical system by a matrix, which makes things much, much easier, um, we know that a lens will have a certain optical tra or ray transfer matrix associated with it. But we don't just have a lens in an optical system. We've also got, say, an object. And rays coming out of that object have to travel some distance, say d1, before they reach the lens. And then we might, uh, we might want to form an image with that lens. And so they'll need to travel another distance d2. So the total transfer matrix requires a propagation matrix, a lens matrix, and another propagation matrix. And so it's critical to understand uh, what this propagation matrix is. And so we're, we're going to derive it um, pretty quickly in this video. So how do, we, how do we figure out these transfer matrices in general? Well, we want to consider um, what we want to happen or what, what's going to happen to a ray. So let's say we've got, uh, we've got a ray defined right here. So this ray has some angle theta uh, with respect to the optical axis, and it's also got some x coordinate. Uh, and let's call these coordinates x in and theta in. And we want to know what happens to this ray uh, as you propagate it a distance d. So what is the theta out and x out of the new ray? Well, I mean, we can just use geometry to, to do that. So if we figure out, okay, we've, propagate the, we've propagated the ray a distance d. Now what does the new ray look like? So what is the new theta in? And what is the new x in? Well, we can just use simple geometry to figure this out. And uh, so we see that, first of all, if the ray is just propagating in a straight line, as rays do, this angle isn't going to change. So theta out is just equal to theta in. But this x coordinate does change. So there's this, uh, there's this delta x right here, uh, a change in the x coordinate. And we can just use geometry to figure out, figure out what that is, um, because delta x is one side of a triangle and d is the other side of the triangle. So delta x over d is just equal to tangent of theta in. Or if we're in the paraxial, uh, if we're using the paraxial pr approximation, which we always do uh, with ray transfer matrix, is it's one of the things they require, uh, then we'll see that theta in is equal to delta x over d, or delta x is equal to d times theta in. But we're not interested in delta x, we're interested in x out. Um, well, we can, we can just see that x out is just uh, x in plus delta x. That was sort of how we defined um, delta x. Uh, sorry, so I, I appear to have mislabeled this. This x in should actually be x out. So x out is just equal to x in plus delta x, or x in plus d times theta in. And so now we have everything we need to construct our matrix. And my personal favorite way of writing matrices is as their, um, as their constituent equations. So we know the equation for our transfer matrix in general is going to be x out is equal to m11 times x in plus m12 times theta in. And theta out is equal to m21 times x in plus m22 times theta in. And this is just another way of writing the transfer matrix m times x in theta in is equal to x out theta out. I just find it a lot easier to map back these equations to the actual coefficients. And so down here, we, we know what x out is. Uh, so x out is just 1 times x in. So this m11 has to be 1. Um, plus d times theta in. So this m12 has to be d. And we also said that theta out was equal to theta in, so this m21 has to be 0. And this m22, this one has right here, has to be 1. And so from that we can just directly reconstruct our matrix because we know a matrix is, the matrix we're talking about is just m11, m12, m21, m22. So our propagation matrix 
and for propagation by some distance d is just equal to 1 d 0 1 great so this is our matrix which describes any incoming ray so any ray of a coordinate x in theta in if you apply the propagation matrix to it that will give you the ray after it's propagated some distance d if you have any questions or comments please feel free to post them down below and if you like the video make sure to give it a thumbs up and thanks for watching bye